here. Oh, okay. I'd like to call to order our meeting for today, our regular meeting for April 16th, 2024, mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock a.m. at Rockingham County Governmental Center, 371 North 65, Breezeville, North Carolina. We'd like to welcome everyone who is here today, and we want to welcome those of you who chose to view us by way of Zoom. Will you please stand as Member Hampton leads us into our Pledge of Allegiance, and our invocation will be by Pastor Rob Haley, New Life Chapel, Stoneville, North Carolina. Our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please remain standing. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to come and say a prayer of blessing upon each and every one this morning. It is an honor and privilege, and I don't take it lightly. So let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you this morning, God, we do th come with thanksgiving, Lord, thanking you, Lord, for this day that you have made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Lord, we thank you for life. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for your dear son that came down and died on a cross, was buried, and was resurrected, that we might have hope, that we might have salvation, that we might have eternal life. And Lord, I do thank you for the privilege that I have to come before the throne of grace and mercy into your presence and ask a blessing upon this council meeting today. Lord, I pray that you would give every member, Lord, a clear mind, a pure heart, understanding, and Lord, to make the right decisions according to your will. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the citizens that is here today, Lord, to, uh, Lord, see what's going on here in this meeting. And Lord, as I came in the building, I seen the words, in God we trust. And Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to let this council meeting keep that in mind. Lord, for, Lord, your will and your purpose in everything might be fulfilled today as they discuss, Lord, whatever it is that's on the table to discuss today, Lord, that they would seek your will and your purpose in it all. And I thank you for our council members. Lord, I just ask you, God, to lead, guide, and direct them in every decision that is made today. And Lord, we just want to give you all honor, praise, and glory for loving us, for who you are, Lord, and we love you. And we thank you for all you do. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Your seat, and we thank you once again, Pastor Rob Haley from New Life Chapel, Stoneville, North Carolina. <clears throat> At this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we approve the agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. You have approved the agenda for today. At number five on our agenda, make sure I'm not speaking this we have a long list of board minutes because you know we met a lot um, beforehand and we have a long list and I'd like to read them all. Um, so I'll call for a motion after I read them all. So we have minutes for February 20th, 2024 absentee meeting minutes. February 20th, 2024, regular meeting minutes. February 22nd, 2024, budget meeting minutes. February 27th, 2024, budget meeting minutes. February 27th, 2024, absentee meeting minutes. March 4th, 2024, absentee meeting minutes. March 5th, 2024, absentee meeting minutes. March 11th, 
2024 absentee meeting minutes, March 15th, 2024 special meeting minutes, March 15th, 2024 county canvas meeting minutes, April 9th, 2024 special meeting minutes, April 9th, 2024 special closed session minutes, and April 9th, 2024 absentee meeting minutes. I call for a motion. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the uh, minutes as read by our chair. Having read and approved them, I make a motion that we accept them. Second. It has been moved and properly second that we accept the minutes as were read starting with February 20th down through April 9th, 2024. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair, yes. I, brought, I bring our attention to the closed session minutes for April the 9th. Uh, it would appear that we're still in session. We never adjourned that session. It shows that we went back into regular session uh, and that was approved unanimously, but we never closed that meeting. We're still in. You closed it in the reg motion in the regular in meeting the minutes. Yes. Okay. All right, so it has been moved and properly seconded that we uh, approve the minutes as were read from February 20th, 24th to April 9th. Um, is there any discussion, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. You have approved the board minutes. At this time, I'd like to open for public comments. Paula, will you read our statement? The public comment period shall be for the purpose of allowing members of the public to present any matter pertaining to Board of Elections business or items on the Board of Elections agenda. Remarks shall be addressed directly to the Board of Elections and not to staff, the audience, or media. The chair shall open the public comment period. Any speaker who wishes to speak shall approach the podium and not speak from his or her seat. Each speaker shall clearly state his or her name and physical address when he or she approaches the podium. Each speaker shall be allotted three minutes. Thank you. And today we have two emails that have been sent to our director and we have two individuals who are here today who would um, address us. So the first email is from Deborah Williams, and the second email is from Rochelle Tucker. So if you will read those to us, Paula. It says, I am a resident of Madison, North Carolina, and I vote at the Western Precinct Madison Mayadan Public Library. I understand that there will be a review and decision discussion made regarding the 2024 general election early vote schedule. Not only does early voting help to ease election day crowding and gridlock, it allows the election officials an opportunity to correct registration errors and address system glitches that may occur. Early voting enjoys popular support. I would like to ask the board to consider adding at least one Sunday to the early voting schedule to allow the faith-based organizations an opportunity to gather their congregations and exercise their right to vote. It's worth mentioning that Seventh Day Adventist and Jews hold Saturday as the day of rest. For some everyday activities, including voting, violates the observance long held as appropriate religious behavior. That being said, it's a win for all in the faith-based organizations to have an opportunity to vote on a Sunday. Thank you for all you do. I appreciate your consideration in my input. Yours in service, Deborah Williams, 403 North Franklin Street, Madison. And the next email is says, Dear Paula and Elections Board, the state of our nation is in a place that we have never seen before. 
and there is a new normal in everything that we do. However, experiencing a new normal with regards to our early voting sites is not a situation that we feel would be in the best interest of our citizens. We are aware that this board will be considering its early voting schedule for the November election. Early voting has become particularly important in the voting process, and we are trusting that you do not believe that this is an area for change from how we have been accustomed to voting. Because of the potential turnout of this 2024 election, it is crucial that the Board of Elections would give our Rockingham County registered voters, along with the potential new registrants, plenty of opportunities to vote and to do so more safely. Any attempts to limit early voting sites would most likely cause a severe decline of participation in our democracy, which plants the perception of voter suppression. After reviewing the early voting options, option five looks good since it affords voters two Saturdays and one Sunday. However, I would recommend that the Sunday date be 1027 instead of 1020. That would allow more publicity to prepare for a greater Sunday turnout. Additional Saturdays afford the Seventh Day Adventists and Jew Jews opportunity to vote on their worship days. The Sunday voting options have proven successful in many counties. Statistics show that it is a higher usage among black voters. It is my belief that early voting plans with weekend voting hours are major in assisting that this fall election runs more smoothly. The Rockingham County branch of the NAACP is fully engaged in the struggle for voting rights, which must embrace the protection and expansion of the ability of the ability of all people to fully participate in the governance of our community, to fair and equitable representation locally and to participate in the voting process. We believe that this board, along with the members of our organization, is in the business of preventing any efforts that suppress or disenfranchise any voters within Rockingham County. Thank you in advance for your positive consideration of this request. Sincerely, Rochelle Tucker, Chair, Political Action Committee of the Rockingham County Branch, NAACP. Thank you. And Clara Stone, if you will come and make your comments, welcome. Hi, I'm Claire Stone, and I live at 172 Leprechaun Lane in Stoneville, and I'm in Matrimony um, Precinct. And I'm here primarily, I'm echoing it, um, I just want to make sure, um, I looked in 2020, and we have, uh, I called it the BOE and three, so the, the four locations, the Board of Elections, and then the three locations. Please don't cut locations, all right? Um, I saw also in 2020, there were three Saturdays and one Sunday, and in the best situation that I can see is, is possibly number five, option five, but if you could, um, maintain that time for Sunday. In 2020, it was one to five. It, it's kind of, um, a, a small thing, but if every year you take an hour away, you're going to be losing that Sunday. So please put at least one Sunday in, possibly two. Please put at least two Saturdays in, possibly three. And uh, please keep the, the sites. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Lisa Harris. Lisa Harris, 311 Short Avenue, Madison, North Carolina. I thank each of you for all your commitment that you've done. You've had a quite large agenda today um, as it relates to meeting minutes because you all have been very diligent in your work. Um, I asked you to continue uh, moving forward with your plans today, just keeping in mind that the things that you've done that have been different throughout the years, the fact that you've increased voter education. <laughs> you've got staff going out into the community. We have to advocate for funding for that. We also need to make sure that we have a budget and we fight for a budget that is <clears throat> very needed in this time and is extremely critical during this time. 
While I do echo some of the things you've already heard from some of the registered voters and the advocates throughout the community, I asked each of you to be mindful as it relates to the opportunity for us to acknowledge various religions. Be um, mindful in the efforts that it allows people like myself that work eight to five to utilize Saturday voting. It also allows us to watch to make sure that those who would like to be a part of advocating to get people to the polls on Sunday and Saturday are able to participate in those opportunities. You have many options today, and I ask you to deliberate and put some extreme time into it. I, like others, also favor for five, but we ask you please to strongly advocate this year for our election year like you've never have before. Thank you for all your commitment. Thank you. At this time, we will close our public comments. And we will move forward to item number seven, the 2024 general election early voting plan. Okay, board members, you have your plans before you. And Paula, I think I, I would like for you to just introduce these plans to us and give us some information that we might not have right here in front of us and give us the opportunity to ask <coughs> questions as we go along. Okay. Um, you will notice that at, behind those options, there is an email from Karen Brinson Bell with the North Carolina State Board of Elections stating that the 2024 early voting plans need to be submitted by the end of the day on Tuesday, May the 7th. Um, the State Board of Elections plans to meet on Monday, May the 20th to review and vote on the unanimous early voting plans and to review the non-unanimous plans and to set a schedule on, hear on hearings for the counties on their non-unanimous voting plans. But in your packets, there are five options for the 2024 general election early voting sites. We will have all four sites open. We have no intentions on closing any of our early voting sites. Um, the locations will be the Rockingham County Board of Elections Office, the Eden Library, the Madison Mayadan Library, and Zion Baptist Church, which are the four locations that we're using now. We are proposing that all four sites be open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., and the last Saturday is from 8 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Those are the minimum requirements from the State Board of Elections. Option number one, of course, is the first one in your packet. It is the minimum requirements, which is 13 days of early voting, which would be starting on Thursday, October the 17th, and then on Friday, October the 18th, the full week, Monday through Friday, the next week, and then the full week, Monday through Friday, the following week, and then Saturday, November the 2nd. The estimated cost of this plan is $52,592. And that, like I said, is the minimum requirements. And if you will look behind the email, I included the early voting site and our requirements for even year and odd year elections. These are the requirements that are established through general statutes and through the State Board of Elections. And we'll move on to option number two. Option number two has two Saturdays, so it would be an additional Saturday. So it has four, four, excuse me, 14 days of early voting, the 13 original days, plus an additional Saturday on October the 26th, and the estimated cost of this plan 
is $55,360, which is an additional cost of $2,768. Option three is it, there would be an additional Saturday and an, an additional Sunday, so it would be two Saturdays and one Sunday. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's one Saturday and one Sunday. So it would remain at the 14 days of early voting. This plan has the original 13 days plus an additional Sunday on October the 20th, and the estimated cost of this plan is $53,513, which is $921 in addition to the original cost. And then option four, Saturdays, and that would be 15 days of early voting. This plan has the original 13 days plus two additional Saturdays, which is October the 19th and October the 26th. The estimated cost of this plan is $58,128, which would be an addition of $5,536. And option five, two Saturdays and one Sunday, which would also be 15 days of early voting. This plan has the original 13 days plus one additional Sunday on October the 20th and an additional Saturday on October the 26th. The estimated cost of this plan is $56,744, which is in addition to the original option one of $4,152. I just wanted to give you all the breakdown of how much each one would cost. Now that is if there's no overtime, and that's why we're trying to have one day during the weekend our weekdays start on Saturday and run through Friday. So we've got to make sure that we're not accumulating overtime with our precinct officials. So this is straight time only with the precinct officials, no overtime, and allowing them to have a day off during those weeks. But those are the options. If you have any questions or you want me to go over that again, I can. Or if you have additional questions, I'll be glad to try to answer those. Um, I, the chair would like to ask, can you tell us which option puts them into overtime? It could, if we get, well, any option other than the original puts them into overtime. But we have to plan where they do not work overtime. And that's why we're working less than eight hours during the week. It would be six to six and a half hours during the weekdays. We would have split shifts, so they do not go into overtime on the Saturdays. So we, we uh, <clears throat> I was wanting to hear that they would have a split shift. We do have the split okay. shift, and we started that in 2022, having split shifts. I have a question. Would it be possible? I, I'm assuming this schedule was presented by the state board. Yes. The only thing the state board does is they tell us when to start and when, when to, to finish. End. Would it be possible to move that Sunday to the end instead of that first week, the first week of early voting? It cannot be after, it cannot be the last day. The last day is the Saturday. So we couldn't move it. You could move it to the 27th. That's the only other option.
But you could not move it to Sunday, November 3rd. Be the day before the, the last election. day of early voting by general statute is that Saturday. Concerns, additional information. Through the budgeting process, is the cost for this part of the election? Yes. Paid for already. It's in there. And what we would do is if you go with more days, then I would cut staffing on election day in certain precincts. It wouldn't have to be all precincts, depending on what that is. We can make it work. Okay. So when you say it's in the budget, or did we factor in, I'm looking at option five. Okay. Did we factor in the $57,000 that would it, according to your calculations, would take to fund that? Um, option five, yes. Option four, no. But option five, yes. yes. <clears throat> Madam Chair. Yes. <clears throat> Question. Paula, the dollar figure that you gave us was only for early voting. That is correct. Do you have Not the cost for election day? I do, but I do not have that with me right now. Because that's obviously we're going to be spending more money, but the election day voting is also going to be expensive. Yes, but this is just for the early voting plan. Right. Um, I've got a separate, and y'all approved that. It was actually broken down election day personnel and early voting personnel. And we have enough to cover, like I said, the option five. If we need an additional $1,400, I can adjust election day pay to cover that amount. Questions, comments? Madam Chair, <coughs> I would just like to make a comment. Yes, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it is, it's, um, we're looking at two issues. Number one, a primary challenge is to be sure that we have adequate time for anyone who wants to vote, and we have adequate communication so that they can know when there are opportunities to vote. Uh, looking at this, we allow a total of 74 hours under option one for a person to come and make an appearance either at, a, um, well, at any early voting. They also have the opportunity for 13 hours at their precinct. So, you know, we're looking at a total of 87 hours. Where am I going with this? I think we also have an equal obligation to the taxpayers who are funding the voting to be sure that we're being consistent and given an opportunity for people to vote, but not spend money unnecessarily. Um, so I think we need to take that into consideration as we uh, decide between these five options. Thank you. Any other comments? Do you need more time? I would, I would just add one more comment that I was going to make and slipped my mind. Uh, we've all gone through a situation 
of receiving our appraisal evacua uh, evaluations on our property. And we've seen anywhere from 20 to 40% increase. And the money for this is gonna have to come out of the pot of the taxes that we pay to the county. So I think we do have a real obligation to all of our voters and all of our citizens to um, be respectful of the fact that we're taking their money and that we're using it wisely. I call for a motion. Madam Chair, I would make a motion that we accept option one because we would be allowing 87 days, excuse me, 87 hours for voting, for someone to show up at, at the polls and they'll have a choice of four locations plus their base location. And I think if, we're, if we do the right job of communicating the schedules, that gives everyone an opportunity to vote. on the floor. Is there a second? Hearing none. Lack of second. Yeah. It fails for a lack of a yes. second. So your motion has failed for lack of a second. Madam Chair, I, I've got a, a question relative to option number five. Comments being made about moving from Sunday, October the 20th, to uh, Sunday the 27th. I'd like to have some discussion relative to that thought process. My thought process? Yeah, yeah, you got to talk to me. I want to make that comment. <laughs> I just think it's it would be more opportune for the voters to vote on the 27th as opposed to the 20th. Early that's early into the election, and it gives them more time to make a decision. Absolutely. Can I ask a question? If we do that, would you be against moving the Saturday to the 19th? That way, it's not. Monday through the next is two weeks solid right. without any time off. I would not be opposed to that. Okay. And which option are we talking about? Five. Five. Actually, sw switching Saturday, October the 26th to October the 19th, and then Sunday, October the 20th to. October the 27th. I do have a question for Member Schoolfield. Did you do the numbers and the hours for each precinct? Did you work up the, the, the number of hours yes, for each? Yes, I did. Options. Would you like so to have was, you yes, like to have that information? Yes, sir. On the early voting is seventy four hours. Okay, for option two, option three, option four, and option five option, is what I'm asking you. Option for. two is hundred and one, a hundred and two. Option three is eighty six. Option four is hundred and thirty. Am I going too fast? No. Yeah, please. Okay, let me start over. Option two, 102 hours is early voting. Option three is 86 hours. Option four, 130 hours. Option five is 114 hours. Okay, one other question. Um, does this include the 13 precincts? in the total that you gave us for each of the options? All of them are 13 hours. I, well, I figured what a person 
had an opportunity to vote. They could only vote in their precinct. And so that would just be uh, 13 hours that the polls would be open. What, what, how are you calculating your hours? What, what factors are you using? Based on the hours on the report of 8 to, eight to 7.30. And then, of course, on the Sunday, it's um, five hours, I believe, four hours. So that's a, I'm looking at option five. So that's 104 hours for that whole week for opportunities for people to vote. Opportunity. You know, they, they, a person goes there and they probably devote an hour to it. And obviously, every one of these, they have the opportunity to vote after five. Every early precinct will be open after, uh, later than five o'clock. Um, Sunday if they if they have to go to work, Did you say 104 hours for option five. Option five is 114. 114. Now the thing that's making the difference, and you may question why, uh, if we're having a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, but the Saturday, Sundays are only going to be for four hours, five hours. No, half an hour, uh, five hours. Three hours. Three hours, you're right. Three hours. Three hours. Yeah, three hours. It's con we're con I'm considering it a half a day, but that's three hours of voting. So you're just adding up the hours for the schedule, like eight hours, eight hours. Is that what I'm you're sorry. doing? You're just adding up the hours of the voting days. I'm, the I'm, over the, I'm, I'm counting the hours that the poll are open at that location. Okay. And, of so, course, they have the option. And what I was looking at was the options that they have. And the, the option to vote in any one of the four locations. So, <clears throat> question, how does that relate to cost? I mean, have you figured up a cost for that? Yes. Paula gave that to us. Uh, the cheapest option, the least expensive option, of course, is number one. Gotcha. $52,950. The least option after that would be, from a cost standpoint, is option three. That's $53,513. The most expensive option is option five, $56,744. Actually, the most expensive option is option four. four. Pardon? The I'm most expensive four. option, I'm sorry. yeah. I'm sorry, you're right. Option four, 58000 528. Madam Chair, I have a question. Were okay. you able to, Paul, were you able to determine how many Sundays were involved in the last general election? Um, in 2020 or 2022? 2022, we didn't have any. No, 2020, general election. How many Sundays are included in those? I did not look at that. I did not. Out to see what I did with it. Oh, put it over here. doesn't break it down. It just gives us a total. I was curious as to what percent voters turn out. It was 76.9. But it doesn't break it out as to early voting. Yeah. Okay.
do want to <coughs> say to the board members that I would hope that we can agree, all agree on one option. I, 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 I would hope that we would not disagree on an option to send us back to sit, to sit before the state board to defend one vote against. Rockingham County is at the bottom of the list. We sit through several hours and looking at what we have just been told, we've looked at option one and we've looked at the cost, and, but we also need to look at opportunity. Every voter in Rockingham County and all over the state needs to have the opportunities that we can put before them. There was a statement about taxes. That's really not under our control. And there is going to be more discussion about the taxes. None of us quite understand, you know, why we are where we are. So I just want to put that out there. Madam Chair, I'd like to be recognized for some comments and a motion. Yes, sir. Madam Chair, what we're faced with here is what is vital to our Constitution, the right to vote. And the right to vote deals with the availability of a staff to staff each one of these precincts. With that in mind, I would move that we adopt option number five with the changes recommended by our director with regards to moving uh, a couple of dates in there. I think that uh, given all the opportunities to vote, we don't want anyone to have an excuse for not voting that I didn't have an opportunity. So with that, I make the motion. Do we have a second? A second. It has been moved and properly second that we um, look at option five with all of the dates, the changes to October 19th and October, October 27th included in it. That means this will be written up if it passes. Is there any discussion? Let me be clear, we're moving Sunday, October 20th, <clears throat> excuse me, Sunday, October 20th to Sunday, October 27th, and Saturday, uh, October 19th to Saturday, October 20th. Saturday, October 19th. Sunday. Discussion the no. Okay. All in favor with option one? Adam, I'd like to make a comment. I certainly agree with uh, Nelson, uh, Member Cole. It is our responsibility to provide the opportunity, but there's also a responsibility not only to have the opportunity to vote, but the responsibility to vote. And to me, uh, going and increasing the number of hours and dollars, uh, if a person is really interested in voting, they're going to have 87 hours that they can get out to the polls in, in this four weeks. And we have opportunities both early and late. And I think that it, I think we do have to consider costs. I think that is an important part of our responsibility. We don't have a blank check. We have a motion and a second on the floor, and we've had discussion. All in favor of option five, say aye. 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 All opposed to option five, say nay. Nay. We have to be unanimous before the uh, board can accept option, so it looks like we will be back in our, to sit before the board to defend 
and there has been plenty of discussion here about what's going on here, and, I, and, 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 and the chair would not like to hear when we sit before the board that there was no discussion, because we're having it. We've had it. So this is where we are. Paula, what is our next step? Um, the next step, I will submit this. We have the option, I know that y'all voted today, but you do have the option if you want to take some more time or review this some more, you can. We have till May 7th. But the way you voted right now, I can turn this in. Um, it, I can go ahead and turn it in now. The State Board of Elections will meet on May the 20th, and they will move from there on when they'll start the hearings with each of the counties. So that's where we stand right now. So board members, what do you, what do you want? Is there a chance our vote's going to change? I mean, I'm just... Madam Chair, yeah. that means Four that we can, we can table this, this discussion and have one more meeting. Is that what we're saying? That's what she's advocating that we could do. But is it going to change anything? I mean, we voted on something. We, we passed it. It's going. Okay. We'd have to undo what we just did. Correct. And no. No. Uh, if I might comment relative to the discussion we're having, uh, I would be opposed to tabling the motion that's been made. I think we've made the motion, and it should be reported as such. Therefore, we move to where we have to go from there. All right. So we will sit before the state board, and we will not table today. Is that in agreement with the four who... Um, voted for the option. Is that in agreement? Well, I think that cost is an important factor. I think <clears throat> considering our public, our voting public, is an important factor as well. And, you know, to me, that really outweighs the other. The money has been appropriated for the election, we have the funds available to us to pay for the cost of the voting option five. I, 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 to me, voting, voting should be, the, the opportunity to vote should be the priority. <clears throat> so now do we need to, um, Go through a motion and a second to not table what we're doing. I want it. So moved. I want it in the minutes, and I want it to be known because I don't want anybody saying that we didn't discuss it. We didn't discuss it. Didn't table it as it was motioned. So I need a motion to not table the so motion. Moved. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor of not tabling what we've already decided for option five? Say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Okay, so we will send this to the state board and we will do what we need to do, sit before them. But I want to make sure that we know that we've had a sufficient amount of discussion. The funds are available, and that she will uh, cut some of her staff. I think she said on election day it was one thing that I heard. If she ne needs that was to. if we were to approve option four. Option five, we're good. Okay, so we're good with option five according to our budgetary. Um, comments that were given to us from our director. 
So we can, we're ready to move on. Can we have our, our director's updates? Okay, the first item is the 2024 second primary election information. The 2024 second primary election early voting will begin on Thursday, April the 25th and run through Saturday, May the 11th. There will be only one early voting site, and that is at the Board of Elections office. The hours of early voting are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then on Saturday, May the 11th, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. There will be no voting on Monday, May the 13th. Election day will be Tuesday, May the 14th at 2020, May 14th, 2024. The polls will open at 6.30 a.m. and close at 7.30 p.m. All 15 precincts will be open. The Board of Elections office is not a voting site. However, if someone comes to our office, we will direct them to the correct voting site. This election only has a Republican ballot with the North Carolina Lieutenant Governor's Contest and the North Carolina Auditor's Contest. There are no other ballots available for the 2024 second primary election. And those sample ballots can be found on the Board of Elections website. The deadline to have changed your party affiliation was on Friday, February the 9th by 5 p.m. If anyone filled out a voter registration form to change their party affiliation after Friday, February the 9th, those changes will not take place until after the May 14th election. Same-day registrations will not be allowed during the 2024 second primary elections. Address and name changes will be allowed. If you go to the Rockingham County Board of Elections website, again, you will find all of this information. Um, you will find the early voting schedule, the sample ballots, the election schedule, absentee voting, board meeting dates, any of that information is all located on the state board, I mean, excuse me, on the Rockingham County Board of Elections website. Um, and included in the board's packet is the 2024 second primary election schedule. And again, like I said, this is also located on our website. Are there any questions on that? Okay, the next item is the 2024 primary election cost. Um, in the board's packet, there is a cost breakdown for the 2024 primary election. You will see the early voting cost and the cost per ballot, the election day cost and the cost per ballot, and then the total cost and the cost per ballot. At the bottom, there is a cost for the recount that was conducted for the Rockingham County Board of Elections contest, and these costs were included in the election day cost. Are there any questions on that? I believe 48 uh, ballots. How many ballots did we have that were provisional? I'm sorry, not provisional, mail-in. Does that, where is that cost? That is actually in the early voting. We had 178 absentee ballots. Now that's not broken out because we had our staff actually do the mailings of all of that. We did not bring in a separate precinct official or additional staff member to do that. So that was absorbed in the cost of our staffing. So that's the last item up there under early voting, $9.81 $9 
That is for all of early voting. That is the 7,649 early votes and the 178 absentee ballot voting for a total of 7,827 ballots that were cast during early voting. So it is $9.81 per ballot. And then election day, we had 9,547 votes. We had 54 provisionals that were approved for a total of 9,601. And the cost per ballot for election day was $5.15. And then the total cost of the 2024 primary election was $126,221.78, with a total of 17,428 ballots cast for a cost per ballot of $7.24. And again, that also included the recount cost for the um, Board of Commissioners race. And you'll see that that's also broken down at the bottom for the precinct officials pay and the video recording for that meeting. But are there other questions or comments? Have. Yes, ma'am. Okay. No board members, no questions, no comments for her. All right. So we're getting, we've gotten to the bottom of our agenda, and um, I'd like to have the board members, if you will go with me down front. We want to make a presentation um, to <coughs> our staff members, and as I go down, um, <clears throat> That's for you to hold that. Well, yeah. That's exactly right. I'll be on this little one. <laughs> I still got to dig something out of this bag. Follow me the bag, lady. that our director and our staff are hard workers and they've done lots of things to get us ready for the elections and they're just hard workers. And so we would like to take this opportunity to let them know that we appreciate everything that they do Take one, come on up here. Now I'm going to step off to the side. That's one. That's one. So first of all, I'd like to call um, to the front our director, and we would like to present her with this plaque in which she has earned the right as a bona fide director. <laughs> and we would like to give her this. This is not her final certificate. This is the one that she got her temporary certificate, but she should be getting her certificate in August. But we wanted to recognize her and to say that we are proud of all that you do. Thank you for working with us and taking our phone calls and trying to figure out what type of questions we're asking and that sort of thing. So we appreciate you. And then I'd like for the two ladies that are sitting over there that are her hook to the hip people, <laughs> Kathy and Polly, if you will come up very quickly, we will get through this. Um, 
will tell you. I will tell you who to give them to. <laughs> <laughs> just, just hang with me. <laughs> so um, Polly has not been with us long, <coughs> but Kathy and um, Polly, I mean, did I say Paula or Polly? Polly has not been with us long. We have presented these two ladies with the flowers. And we want her, her, her china roses, to be displayed on her desk, just as they are on the desk of these two. So we have these china roses, um, Polly, that we would like to present to you, and Member Hampton is going to hand them to you. And then, if you notice, you have four. You got three in your office, and we are handing you now one to make four for you. Paula is to get the yellow, and Kathy is to get the pink. And then we would like for you, since you've been so busy, we want you to um, have a drink on us. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Member Cole is going to give you your drink. And it's not from the ABC, it's from Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> And member Totten is going to give Polly um, mm -hmm, her drink. And I'm going to give Paula her drink. <laughs> and if you notice this food line gift card for her, her Mountain Dews. She's a Mount, Mountain Dew drinker. Yeah. So thank you all for all that you do. We appreciate you. And I need to say to these members that are standing around me, I don't know what I'd do without you. Tom calls me and keeps me straight, lets me know if something you know, needs to be looked at again, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. When I'm talking too much, I can look over at um, member Hampton, and it tells me, back up. <laughs> <laughs> if I need some gum or something to get my, my, my throat <laughs> straight, I can always look to her. And this person right here keeps it going all the time. <laughs> so we do appreciate the board members and the staff members, and we would like to take our hats off to you, each of you today. Board members, I appreciate you and all that you do. Thank you so much. I would just like to add that we really appreciate the staff. We could not have had the year we've had. Uh, we've got a big one coming ahead of us. But it also is important to have good leadership. And Ophelia has done a good job with that. We don't always agree, as we approved today. But uh, we look at the world from different positions, and we look at, the, at from different perspectives. And I think that's healthy. I think that's a good thing. We can share with one another. We can share our opinions. But it wouldn't happen without you guys. You just do a great job. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So you all can go back to your seats, and we will adjourn. <laughs> If you got your recent revaluation of your property, that's a spit in the bucket. Yeah, that's right. That's all it is about. If you got the money to cover it, why not do it? If you got the money to cover it, why not do it? Thank that's you, sir. Right. And I would like to say that, <coughs> um, take my hat off to Member Totten because she's a gold mine of China Roses. So we'll be able to keep it going. <laughs> so thank you so much, Member Totten, for helping us out. And we're at the point on our agenda for adjournment. So I call for a motion. So moved. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we adjourn. Is there any discussion? 
<clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. We have adjourned at 11.04.